Hello folks, R1 here. It was my privilege to take part recently in Obsidian Entertainment's second focus test of Armored Warfare. In Armored Warfare, you are not restricted to national guidelines in any way. You play the role of a modern military contractor, and your vehicle selection and acquisition is only restricted by what the various arms dealers you will do business with have available in their inventories. I'll show you a bit more of that system a little bit later. Primarily, I'm going to show you the basic interface of the game and some of the gameplay you can expect with this title. Armored Warfare focuses on modern day Armored Warfare, starting roughly in the 50s and progressing all the way up to present day. I would like to stress right off the bat that this is alpha footage and literally everything that you see in this video is subject to change before release. There were representative vehicles from Tier 1 through Tier 5 available for us to unlock, although eventually there will be 10 tiers of vehicles to choose from. I was only able to get two of each tier unlocked up through Tier 3 by the end of the test, uh, which is unfortunate, but it's for reasons I'll go into shortly. I'm going to switch commentary gears now and take you through some of my thoughts on the game as the test was nearing its close. When I started out, I was in this little guy, a little light tank, which actually wasn't too bad. This little recon vehicle here, this LAV-150, wow, it was a bit tricky to keep alive. It's a very high profile vehicle and it <laughs> its gun doesn't pack a whole lot of punch. But if you get behind something, you can even hurt the big boys with it uh, within reason. Tier 2 was the British Scorpion and the AMX Tempe, both of which, again, were tricky to keep alive. Their primary job was spotting the enemy or going for a base capture, which is pretty tricky right now. And everyone wants to fight right now, which is understandable. So your own team was not real happy with you if you were testing the base capture mechanics. I get that. That's okay. But... The other team seemed to be inordinately good about leaving a couple of people back to guard their base. Now, I, I don't know how gameplay is going to evolve, if that's going to become a standard practice or not. But I wasn't quite, I don't think, I wasn't able to capture completely a single base. I always got jumped before I could get the base captured. Maybe if I'd had a little support, I would have done better. But usually, because... These vehicles are pretty quick. Uh, I would get out there all by myself and I would survive for a while, but eventually someone would bounce me and I, I maybe kill one or two, but then, then they'd get me. So that didn't work out too well for me. I found these vehicles at the moment very difficult to play, but as I'm sure I've already mentioned, everything is subject to change. There's a ton of balancing that's going to happen we're just going to have to sit tight and see how things develop. I'm going to try and give the best feedback to them that I can. Now one thing that made this difficult, because of some server issues that they were having, I wasn't able to log in for the first couple of days. Not everyone was afflicted by this. And when we got into this match, um, I say we because I... I watched video by Jingles just today actually and he had the same problem we were pretty outclassed there were guys running around in tier three and four vehicles while we were still puttering around in these little recon vehicles so that made it a whole lot more difficult for us to advance uh, and it took more time than it would have for everyone that all started out in the light recon vehicles and light tanks uh, at first so that really slowed us down but we managed to make up for it and the developers gave us a little boost on the last day to help us on our way so that helped as a matter of fact on at the very end of last night i had just gotten the leopard and i'm like great i finally got it and i clicked on buy and it was at that point that the server shut down for the evening <laughs> i'm so glad they kept it open today too uh, and when I logged back in, it was a little bonus to, to help people out. I think they realized that some of us got got kind of a raw deal there, just a little bit. Totally not their fault. But uh, 
I was I was kind of sweating having any content at all to show you guys because running around in these little things when it, just about everybody else well a large portion of the people in the match were in tanks in the Leopard and Patents League and up not so easy here is my crew and as you can see I've trained up a couple of interesting skills here the list is to the right not all of them were available at first so I'm presuming those unlock depending on the choices you make and how many uh, points they accumulate here. And you can change the portrait if you like, which is kind of nice. And the commander. Now I think these first two that we've been given are kind of generalist commanders, which can be assigned to any number of vehicles, at least of certain tiers. Um, further on in the game you'll get more specific commanders that are good with just a particular vehicle or, or possibly a limited selection of vehicles I don't know we'll see how that pans out and each one has their little history which is kind of nice and what bonuses that they get uh, they always come with one set of bonuses right off the bat uh, and the second one I purchased uh, it shows your basic equipment you start out with and all of the pertinent stats and then you start unlocking them you unlock new equipment with your points over here reputation points and points that you accrue in the match for how well you do this total is the relevant number here so if I were to buy the 105 millimeter HE shell this listed here it would cost a hundred <laughs> ironically 105 of these points these stay with you these are reputation points up here they, they stay with you from match to match to match and slowly increase depending on how well you do it's kind of like a um, free experience pool in a way that never goes away uh, down here are the points that you earn in matches for how well you do damage done etc etc spotting capturing all that kind of good stuff you do have certain prerequisites that you need to be aware of. The rangefinder has to come before the gunner's periscope, so on and so forth. Uh, base, don't know what's going to happen there yet. That kind of has me intrigued. Here's the point totals that you need to accumulate before you can go into the next vehicle. There are different prerequisites for certain vehicles, depending on the dealer and the vehicle. You might have to, for example, not only have invested a certain amount of points in the predecessor of the tank you're trying for, well here, let's show you the dealer's tree here. Look, look at uh, Shishkin. If I wanted to go for the M60A3, it's the next one in line after my Patton, I would have to have fought three out of three battles with his vehicles, fair enough, and I would have had to have spent a certain amount of points invested in upgrading my Patton. So in other words, you can't unlock it and then just skip by it if you've accumulated enough experience points. You have to spend some of that point total on the vehicle that you're in. At least upgrade it somewhat and make it usable. Uh, they're usable right off the bat, but of course, like any other game of this ilk, you are going to be at a disadvantage. One thing that's interesting is not all the vehicles have the same prerequisites. For example, with this little VBL, which is a cool little, very nimble vehicle, scoots around all over the place. You have to have done uh, a certain amount of damage to enemy vehicles while on the move, while driving one of his line of vehicles. With this one, you would have to have done uh, damage to vehicles at relatively close range, a certain amount of damage within 150 meters so you have to hone your in close fighting skills the other dealer has what is it this line is just basic points spent on upgrades this line over here she's a little bit more limited than what she has available this one these are apparently sniping vehicles because you have to have done so much damage from more than 300 meters away so that should be interesting and we are only seeing two dealers for this test. There should be a ton of dealers eventually. Now here's PVE missions. Obviously, to go to battle, you would click that button there. 
Um, I don't know what the missions are going to be like. That should be interesting. Dossier just gives all your personal information. Yes, I suck so far. <laughs> and I'm sure I've explained why already, but uh, excuses are excuses. Uh, I'm just starting to do fairly well here at the end, but well, I guess uh, 33 wins, 24 losses. I guess that's not too bad. One draw. I haven't survived all that many rounds. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, well, kills 20, and I've died 45 times. That's horrible. But I'm a great big assist monster, and there's a reason for that too. And I've, I'm sure I've discussed that with you as well. So, and then it gives you a breakdown according to vehicle. So all in all, you have some nice stats that you can access if you want to. And there's achievements, and I don't know what's up with that yet. So that's the basic interface. Thanks for bearing with the in-game narration. At the time that I am editing this video, I have just about lost my voice. So I had to depend on off-the-cuff comments a lot more heavily than I had intended to. Let me clear up a couple of other things that I didn't cover during the live commentary section. I mentioned that we had started out at a disadvantage. Don't get the wrong impression from that. If there was a proper matchmaker in place, that wouldn't have been a big deal. But considering it was a very limited test, there really wasn't a matchmaker. So everyone got thrown into the same matches, no matter what tier they were. I don't know how the matchmaking system is going to work, but I'm pretty sure that tier 1 vehicles wouldn't be in the same matches with tier 5. Also, for the sake of time, I skipped over the portions that dealt with how ammunition and consumables are handled in-game because, frankly, they are more or less industry standard. Thank God they didn't feel it necessary to reinvent the wheel in this regard. And that also includes the basic controls of the game. If you are playing anything in the genre of tank combat currently, you should have no problem moving from whatever you're playing now into Armored Warfare. I found it extremely helpful not to have to figure out, from scratch, the basic mechanics of the game. The graphical effects in-game are top-notch, especially in regard to the varied weather conditions you will encounter in matches. The audio effects are well done as well and really bring home the sensation of fighting in a driving rainstorm or traversing a frigid, windswept ridge in the dead of winter. They've done a nice job putting background activity into the matches as well, with flights of choppers moving back and forth, or intense air-to-air -air jet combat taking place overhead. These are nice touches that are being incorporated right off the bat, and not being left as afterthoughts to be filled in later. Whether immersion is important to you or not, on a subliminal level, they serve to really set the stage for your gaming environment. We were actually treated to four different maps during the alpha, but the developers requested that I not show two of them, as they were not yet optimized. This put a serious hitch in my plans for this video, as the other two maps are nothing short of spectacular. Still, what I'm able to show you is certainly eye candy enough. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. The developers, Obsidian Entertainment, have been quoted as saying their aim was to try and find that sweet spot between realism and an action movie which in my eyes is a pretty worthy, not to mention sensible, goal for a game developer to have. If you enjoy tank combat, and have always yearned for gameplay of this type featuring modern day vehicles, Armored Warfare looks like it is shaping up to be just what you've been looking for. I'm going to follow closely how this game develops, and I suggest you do the same. Well, that's all I have for you this time around. Until I see you again, good hunting. Thanks for watching. I hope you were entertained. If you liked the video, please remember to subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. And I'll see you next time.